Sunday, Sunday afternoon, a Sunday of celebration as, um, of course, you know, in the last uh, few days we've had this national holidays. Uh, we are glad to be with you again today. I'm Obiora Ilo from Abuja in Nigeria on a Sunday that our president is um, arriving in the United States to start a historic official visit. I have uh, Mamode with me. Yes, Obiora. Um Everyone is talking about Mr. President's visit to the United States uh, coming uh, just less than two months after he took office. And a lot of people are wondering uh, that invite to uh, President Muhammad Buhari uh, to the United States to meet with uh, President Obama. Quite a lot for you know, people to read into the significance of that invitation, well, um, some, uh, but top on the <laughs> list, uh, Obiora, I mean, security. Oh yes, uh, the oh, fight yes. Oh, against yes. uh, Boko Haram. Boko Haram, and mm. uh, there are going to be a lot of economic issues as well. Oh yes, and so many things to be talked about. But people are also already talking about the small, small privileges that we are told they never extended to anyone but our president. Of <laughs> course, they said this is the first time a president that has not been there for like two months is being invited to the White House. Yeah. This is the first time a Nigerian president will stay at the Blair House, the very historic Blair House. I, 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 I think <laughs> I w I'm, going to, I'm going to have to double check on that. That's what's uh, in all the well, papers. Well, well, but I know we, there are people in the studio that uh, will tell us whether that's true. Well, <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can go back a little bit to Tafa Balewa. I think... <laughs> He, he might have resided in uh, that, uh, yes. In so the Blair House. Yes. Um, so but those are just the, um, the intangibles. Uh, yes. You know, but like but you said. Well, there's also going to be, uh, they already promise of tracking down stolen wealth, uh, stolen monies mm -hmm. from Nigeria. Uh, uh, there was, the US you know, I read in one paper they said, the Obama, uh, Obama said to our president, um, just show us where the money is and we'll go and get it, <laughs> you know. So, uh, <laughs> later on in the program today, we're going to be talking to uh, uh, some gentlemen who should know uh, the kind of importance that this kind of visit will be to Nigeria as a nation. Um, we're going to be joined uh, later on uh, by Nigeria's former Consul General in the United States of America, Ambassador Joe Keshi, uh, also joining us later, uh, is former, a, is former yeah. uh, Minister of State in the Foreign, Foreign Affairs, Affairs Ministry. Yes, uh, um, His Excellency Chief Dubem o Onya. Onya. Yeah, Chief Dubem Onya was also in the House of Representatives at a certain point. He's been in uh, at the formation of several political parties in Nigeria. Yeah. So, so much to talk about. So, uh, I mean... <laughs> and he uh, has accompanied uh, yeah. uh, the president <laughs> on such visits. So, so, from a political angle, we're going to be able to understand this. From what is a happening? diplomatic angle, we're going to be able to understand the president's visit and what Nigeria hopes to get out of this visit. Also, Biora, uh, later on uh, in the program today, you all knew, of course, that uh, Stephen Keshi, uh, was, appointed, was appointed uh, <laughs> in April and then fired uh, only you know, a few months uh, later. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sure. And uh, there's a new coach in the saddle, in the person of Sunday Ulisse. You know, but Obior, I'm wondering, you know, the entire thing is a Delta State thing, you know, uh, the chairman of NFF, uh, Maju Pinnick, you know, firing Stephen Keshi, Delta State, bringing in Sunday Ulisse, Delta State. Um, you know, I I think you know. The other day, I said uh, maybe we'll be calling it the, the super egos of Delta State. The super egos of Delta <laughs> State. <laughs> anyway, we have somebody in the studio, someone yes. who has seen all the politics in the super egos. He coordinated the egos for so many about eight years, but he yes. has been in the super egos, been wanting or the other. No, since but in the national, he's been with the national team. National team since the, 2002. You know, yes, um, the on the 17, on mm -hmm. the 23, you know, and of course, uh, you know, uh, up to the super egos. Uh, coordinating them and for... And that's the great uh, Emmanuel uh, yes. Asa. Yeah. He's already in our studio. He will be talking about that, giving us all the details. But just... Uh, uh, very quickly, quickly, the papers. Okay, yes, the Dasuki story is, is in the papers. Our, our Dasuki story, DSS. Uh, and they're saying the former national security advisor is suspected of treasonable felony. Um... And they say he resisted DSS agents with soldiers, military weapons, gear found with him, 12 vehicles. You know, this is a guy just left office hours back, 
um, I, I'm not going to lose sleep over the fact that, you know, uh, a pistol or rifle is found in the house of the former n immediate past national security advisor. A retired I colonel. A retired colonel. I, I mean, um, anyway, whatever is going on, uh, they need to just let us know that due process has been followed. We don't want to see a witch hunt. Um, well, whatever it is. We said it before, um, nobody is above the law. If yeah. um, there's evidence that this man should be arrested. By all means. Oh, by all means he should be arrested. Yes, but um, we, yes. we, we, we insist on due process. We don't want all this Gestapo-like um, invasion of people's houses. I mean, it's a democracy that. for crying yeah. out so, loud. So yes. let him do the, the proper thing if the man is guilty or there's enough evidence to prosecute him. For God's sake, go and prosecute him. But... Um, and again, the, the former CS, the immediate CS, uh, past CSO of the president yes. uh, is also being rumored to be arrested. Yeah, well, that's why I, I was... Uh, we insist on due process. Yes. I think uh, that's what we're saying. We, we <laughs> will not stand for anything that looks like a witch hunt, obviously. Um, well, the crisis in National Assembly is still ongoing. The story that will uh, never go away. Yeah, it will never go away. And um, I don't, we've not seen the last of it yet. Uh, the House is not resuming like they had well, said. Well, yeah, uh, for, for obvious reasons, they still have leadership issues. If they are still battling with leadership issues after two months after getting into office, I wonder what time they will have uh, to make the laws that will keep Nigeria anyway, uh, so, moving so, forward. So many issues in the papers, <laughs> but we are not going to waste too much time on that. Yeah, we have so uh, much to talk we'll about. We'll take a break and then... The big weights in uh, the diplomatic circle will be here to explain all these complex issues as it has to do with the president's visit in a moment. Don't go away. Everybody sees me today in the position I'm in, a fast-growing company. They don't really understand the story and the struggle behind my success, where I've come from, and really where it takes to achieve success. Fortunately, growing up in poor situation, I grew up in a pretty wealthy area, being poor. And I think there's nothing worse in life than growing up poor in the face of people having everything. It makes you really realize what you don't have. When you grow up in an area where nobody has anything, you're kind of all on a level playing field. But when you grow up in a wealthy area where everybody seems to have so much more than you, you know. You know that you don't have as much them. You know your parents don't have as much money. I realized what I don't have. I realized what I wanted. And I made sure from a very young age that I would succeed at every goal I've ever dreamt of. Seeing my parents work and struggle inspired me to work. I didn't have the money like everybody else did when they went to university where their parents paid for them and they had the nice cars and uh-uh. I worked three jobs to put myself through university. I graduated and till this day I'm so thankful that I had to go through those experiences because it's those struggles and those hardships that define me as a person. You need to sacrifice almost everything to achieve your goal. So when people say you're lucky, they don't know what they're talking about. And people that say that will never achieve their goal because luck has nothing to do with it. Because if I was that lucky, I wouldn't have fallen on my face so many times. I wouldn't have failed so many times. I wouldn't have had so many sleepless nights. Perseverance is the key to success. And then when you succeed, people are going to try to justify to you in a very simple way why you've succeeded. I know what I'm capable of. I know what I'm going to do. And I know where I want to be. Hello, once again. And it's time for us to get down to brass tacks. Joining us immediately to take a look at Mr. President's visit to the United States of America, Ambassador Joe Keshi uh, and Chief Dubem Onya. Your Excellency, glad to have you. Glad to see you, Mr. President. Welcome. Excellency. My pleasure. You're welcome. My pleasure. Please, please. Sit down. How did you get me on Kishi? <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for those that will give us all the in-depth analysis that we really... <laughs> and you forgot one thing uh, when your introduction. Kef, uh, Kishi was uh, also one time permanent secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Oh, really? Yes, he was. <laughs> yes. Gentlemen, you're welcome to us. One of my best, uh, uh, best considerer. 
Yeah. Before, what's the name of, uh, we've had him on the program, uh, Umay Hubi. Uh, yeah, the Martin, former, yes, yes, yes. the middle past, yeah. yeah. He, yeah. he yeah. took yeah. over from him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay, yeah. let's, um, mm -hmm. you know, when it, it has to do with all these diplomatic things, you know, like when you gentlemen were walking in, I was telling my mother we had to be careful how we greeted you because there were procedures yeah. and what have you. You know, I'll go to you, Ambassador Keshe. You've been on the ground for so many years. When a president, a Nigerian president, is making this kind of visit, can you give us a little background uh, of what happens months, weeks, days, and then when he's in, 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 in the United States? Well, it's, uh, it involves a lot of planning, really. Very delicate, careful planning. Uh, once you accept the invitation, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs gears up. Uh, they begin to prepare the briefs, and the briefs contains uh, all the possible issues that the president may wish to raise with his foreign counterpart. And at the same time, we anticipate some of the issues that the, oppose, that the other side may wish to place on the table during the, during the discussion. We're also very conscious of the, of the, of the protocol because Specifically in the case of the United States, they are very particular about seating arrangements. Okay. In the sense that you might just find out that uh, in the meeting with the president, it might just be four plus one or five plus one, depending on the issues to be discussed. So when you see the whole de delegation, I can assure number. you, yeah. not everybody is going to be in the White House. Absolutely. Not everybody is going to be in the Ministry of Defense, and not everybody is going to be in the Senate. Okay. So I think people, when President Obama on job visited some time ago, I think his first or second, first one, you know, first one. And let me say he stayed in Blair House. So, so what so about so that? So why is that the first place? It's not the first place. The paper the was there. Was there. Was there. Ah, you know, Nigerian oh. newspaper. I mean, uh, uh, um, media need to be very careful, oh, absolutely, so that they do not parade their ignorance all the time. Mm -hmm. They could have checked with the foreign ministry yes, or too. any other, or just mm -hmm. go back to those who were with the president on these visits, you know. So having said that, that that's just the, 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 the background to it, but it takes a lot of work trying to anticipate the issues that we discuss, no, that we discuss right now. Yes, yes, just a minute before okay. you. Let me, you know, you've given us the idea of what happens from the other side. Uh, Chief Dubemonia had accompanied the president on a visit like this. What happens back home, you know, before this visit? And how are you welcomed when you arrive and all that? No, first and foremost, you know, back home, like he said, like the Keshi uh, said, there's a lot of meetings before the visit, before the actual date. Um, we anticipate, we already have the program. And before that, the two ambassadors, if we have one, will meet. The Nigerian ambassador, our ambassador in the um, in Washington will come home to brief the president. The uh, American ambassador will meet, and they will exchange to and with a lot of briefings and meetings. Um, but when you get down there, uh, it is not the same thing as we do here. Uh, the president, uh, President Obama, will not be at the airport to receive uh, yeah. our president. Uh, our president, maybe the secretary, of the, the secretary of state will be there, or somebody else will be there. No, the secretary of state won't be there. Won't be there either. <laughs> but they, 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 they will eventually. At the time, to, you know, Obama will be at the uh, White House to receive the president with his own team. And so that's what, what happens but, but, uh, back home. We prepare everything. We have our points ready. The president is well briefed. Uh, things to anticipate, things to say, uh, protocol-wise, procedure-wise. All these things will be taken care of back home before we get there. All right. Um, let me still stay with you, uh, you know, because uh, coming from a more political uh, background. Now this visit coming at this time, um, let's take a step backwards so that we can better understand uh, what the visit today uh, probably will you know, uh, signify. Um, the relationship with the U.S. has become you know, a little bit frosty under President Jonathan, given you know, issues with his, um, uh, you know, the gay uh, issue, the, the signing of uh, contract with the Chinese, opening up Nigeria's oil industry, Chinese and all that. So the relationship had been, you know, not too good. Uh, I don't know the right diplomatic word to use here. You, you will use frosty. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. You know, but 
um, with this invitation almost immediately after the elections, swearing in for uh, Muhammad Buhari, you know, how does that pan out for Nigeria in terms of opportunities now? Well, you see, normally we should go with our own shopping list. What is uppermost in our mind? What do we want from the United States of America? And they have their own uh, expectation from us. Remember that uh, President Obama has not visited Nigeria since the inception of office. And he's the only American president who has not visited Nigeria. Uh, Bush was here. Uh, Clinton was here. It's not because of that, the kind of relationship that you talked about. But now, I think that this visit is going to smoothen things. Uh, the doors will be open. We've never had it better. We had it better during the time of uh, President Clinton, when Agawa was introduced, yes. when, we, when the door was open to African goods and things like that. We had a very good relationship uh, with, uh, with the United States. And I think the, es the essence of this particular visit is to smoothen up the relationship between Nigeria and the United States. And for me, it depends on what the president has uh, 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 on his card, his shopping list. And I know that there are certain minimal expectations the American leaders <coughs> want from us. Uh, but uppermost in our list, I should, if, I, uh, if I, I would guess, will be how do we solve the, the issue of security? How do we solve the issue of corruption, which is a very monumental thing, a cancerous thing that is in up Nigeria? And if I were to add the one other thing, is how do we solve the, proper, the, the, the problem of power, power supply in Nigeria? If we can get these three things right, if we can get assistance from the United States or wherever, wherever, get these three things right, then Nigeria will be on the path to recovery and progress. Okay, uh, Ambassador Keshi, um, let me assume, I know sometimes it's not proper to assume, but let me assume you're still sitting there mm -hmm. as permanent secretary at the Foreign Affairs Ministry, and you're preparing a briefing for the president on this trip, what will those briefings focus on? Well, what we normally do in our briefs, the, the first part of the brief traces the relationship between the two countries. Sometimes we go as far back as when we establish diplomatic relations in order to ensure that the president has a very good knowledge and understanding of the relationship. And you've used the word trusting relationship. We also try to trace what led to, to this trusting relationship. Um, I believe that what, what you are saying in the terms of the trusting relationship actually did not start now. It, it's been there for quite some time. Uh, because when you go back to the 60s, I think that uh, the United States are seeing uh, such a, a country with a huge population, potentials and resources had expectations of Nigeria. We also had expectations of, of the United States. I think at one time they wanted us to be on their side during the Cold War. We were non-aligned during the Cold War. On the issue of apartheid with two opposing sides, they, were, they wanted a constructive engagement. engagement we yes. wanted complete decolonization of of Africa. And I, most people do not remember that one of, one of the things, the fallout of that period, was the fact that Henry Kissinger was on a visit to Africa and we refused Henry Kissinger coming to this country. He was actually in uh, South Africa when we said he should not visit Nigeria. Nigeria. They, 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 the Americans, you know, didn't like that. And um, during the Clinton, uh, I mean, uh, early years of the Obama regime. You recall that Mrs. Clinton we said here, her issues were corruption, investment, and the rest of it. So some of these issues we pile up to ensure that the president has a very clear understanding and appreciation. But we also offer our own viewpoint and advice to the president that on this issue, this is Nigerian position. On this issue, this is Nigerian position. You must understand that Every country conducts its foreign policy based on its national interests. Okay. And I've always said it, if there's one country who drives its national uh, uh, interest, sometimes an irritating position is the United, United States. States. <laughs> United States yeah. So when you're engaging with the United States, mm. you must be very certain of what you want mm. and how to drive your own issues so that if they put on the, if they put on the table issues you're not comfortable with and you do not want it, 
you just know how to dip uh, diplomatically push back. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but staying with that, how to diplomatically push back. Now, some of the things that a lot of people uh, are worried about, uh, you know, for instance, um, let's take the issue of, you know, uh, legalizing, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, same-sex marriage, and I mean, which uh, President Jonathan didn't waste time to, you know, outlaw uh, in Nigeria. Derive so, it from the National yeah, Assembly. Yes, yeah, supposing that comes up, uh, I mean, because only recently you saw the victory for the uh, uh, Obama administration in terms of legalizing same-sex marriage. So if, if that comes up, what should our president be saying? Because this government uh, under President Muhammad Buhari has done more to, to try to distance itself from the Jonathan administration as different from national interest. They've been pushing change, change, change. But shouldn't President Buhari out there in the United States defend the Nigerian position very clearly when it comes to issues like this and stay with the past administration that this is our position as a country? Well, one of the questions you have to ask yourself is, did Obama, out of choice, support this same-sex marriage? It's politically correct for him absolutely, to do so. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely, because when he started, he didn't support it. But he found out that he was going to lose a lot of political support, so he decided to... So, Nigerian position is this. What effect would it have on President Buhari back home if he decided to support that? And as a minimal... Very negative. Absolutely. So you have to tell the Americans, look, listen, what is good for you at, in America is not good for us back home. We cannot accept this. The Nigerians will not accept it. If you want to help us, you want us to maintain good relationship, Respect our own values, we we'll respect your values. And I think that's the minimal thing that we, our president, we expect our president to say. It is purely a cultural thing, an internal thing, and a it, religious, it, and thing. Can, religious thing, and it must not be compromised. By the way, Nigeria is a country, and I keep saying it, and I've said it many times, I said it during the, um, during the American invasion to uh, Iraq, you know, uh, what I told the uh, um, Ambassador Jetta that we're not going to support that invasion unless we, uh, unless we, we get the report of the uh, inspectors that were sent to Iraq uh, to, to verify the, uh, the, the arms, the, yeah. the, 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 the arms in Iraq, and until the United Nations, because we are, si we are signatories to the United Nations, you know, endorses the invasion of Iraq, they didn't like it. it was a day before the invasion, and I told them they would regret it, and they are regretting it. So there are minimal, minimal things our president, we expect our president to say, look, this is no good area. The issue of same-sex marriage is a no good area for Nigeria. If they really want a good relationship with us and want to support us for what we're doing, we have better burning issues. That you can, you can leverage on. How do, we so, how do we solve the issue of security in Nigeria? How do we solve the issue of power, power support? We can, we can you know, uh, synergize our, our, our But, our but it will not be just about what they want to give to Absolutely, you. Absolutely, that's what I'm saying. They also get, try to get you know, something out of like, you. Like, like, like uh, uh, Keshi said, first and foremost, the American foreign policy is to protect the interests of the American. And our own foreign policy, I've always said, is to protect our, 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 our citizens. That is why we're a democratic, uh, 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 democratic nation. The president is democratically ele elected, and it's duty to protect Nigerians, to get the, 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 the vibe of Nigerians. The, the, you know, and they know exactly what Nigerians want. So we don't expect him to go there and compromise certain issues. Okay. That issue is, is a no-go area. Okay, I'm let, sure let, 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 let me just okay. add that to, yeah. that to that question by reminding you all that uh, the conversation will not take more than 40 wow. minutes. <laughs> if it's up to 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the conversation will not take more than 40 minutes. We'll be lucky if it's more than 40 minutes or it's over, over shoots by some uh, minutes. And then there are far more fundamental issues between the two countries that I have said it in order for uh, that I'm not too sure this gay issue will be on the table. Be on the table. Yeah. Maybe where it will probably occur will be in some of the outside the White House engagement of the president. Yeah. Questions might be asked and if no questions are asked, I'm not too sure that uh, President Buhari will bother himself and bring up the issue. Again, more because President Buhari, I want to believe, has some specific issues he wants to take 
on with the United States. Again, security being on the top of the agenda, economic issues being, you know, the next, corruption. and the issue of power, and well, I have different views on corruption, but yeah. it will come <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ambassador Keshe, um, you know, in answering one of the questions, you use the word that a lot of uh, uh, foreign affairs scholars, you know, like to talk about when it concerns America. Irritating, let me add mine now, bullying tendencies of the American uh, government. You know, trying to run through what they believe in, uh, using, using the financial uh, taps, and then using security taps and all that. In engaging the United States on this visit, how can we strategically wade through all this bullying and get some result as it concerns security assistance, which was a big problem during the Jonathan uh, administration, getting America to buy into our security challenges and help us. I mean, they, they practically turned their turned, back, yeah, really. The, their back Just stood and watched what Came was up happening. with reasons of corruption, of uh, human rights abuse. How can we, you know, wait well, through? Well, bear, bear, bear in mind also that uh, they turned, America turned its back against us during the Civil War. Oh. In fact, if you read some of the memoirs of uh, Richard Nixon, he actually found anybody coming to talk to him about the civil, Nigerian Civil War as very irritating. And he used to tell his people that, look, this is a British problem, so let the British solve the, <laughs> solve the problem. <laughs> and so it's not just that he turned their backs on us here. During the Sierra Leone, Liberia crisis, yes. they refused to sell night goggles for our Air Force. So what they did recently, it's not new. They, they always found reasons for this. But your, more specifically, your question is, how do you push back? Let me begin by saying that, one, the respect a nation gathers out there internationally is also based on your behavior in your own country. Bear in mind that foreign policy is simply an extension of domestic policy. So if you behave put correctly in your country, every other country would invariably respect you. So in dealing with some of these issues, all you need to do is to place your own position, you know, on the table. But you also have to be fair, I mean, fair to yourself, to be sure, particularly in this age of global television, mm -hmm. that what you are saying is true. And nobody would, look, you can't be, the president, for example, cannot go to the White House and say to President ba Obama, Look, we are winning the war. And the next, right at that moment, somebody <laughs> brings a note to say there have been four or five so, series of so bombings. <laughs> in. No, 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 no. So you have to be very careful when you are dealing with uh, these issues. But it depends on how you deal with these issues at home, how you handle these issues. Part of the American irritation is that they expected a lot from us in terms of handling some of these issues. Let's take, for example, the issue of corruption. If you visit the, um, the Halibontine case, uh, yeah. the cement case, now, everybody from the United States or from Europe who were involved in bribing Nigerian officials have and been tried and arrested. And arrested. Mm -hmm. They've gone to jail. Mm -hmm. Some have served their jail yes, terms. Yes. Now, some of those people they named that took the money in Nigeria, nobody has been arrested, talk of, uh, prosecution. of prosecution. So that's part of the, part of the irritation. The one I do not agree with is the invitation to, by Nigeria to, I mean, uh, getting the United States involved in the, either in training of our military or providing mm -hmm. intelligence. And you refuse to share intelligence because you think that it would uh, either leak out to the other side and you don't have a clearly defined evidence to that, or you say that the Nigerian military is corrupt because it irritates even the military itself here at home. Yes. Invariably, it retates the, 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 the officials, particularly when you have no clear evidence of what you're saying. Of what you're saying. You know, on this issue of corruption, I've always said it to people that quite often in this country, we exaggerate it because everybody hampers on corruption. Next, that could be endemic corruption. But you have to be careful because when it starts, for example, when Sanusi said that 
uh, 40 billion, then 20 billion, uh, you know, it has been missing from the, down. you know. <laughs> now, it goes viral all over the world. Yes. And for the next God knows how many years, that's what the Western media will be using to portray the corruption in Nigeria. But as of today, I guess most Nigerians are confused. Exactly what is missing, very few, but any, any of us can say. But in the minds of the people outside. So it becomes difficult for a Nigerian president going out there or listening to this thing, listening to an American diplomat coming to tell him, look, we know 40 billion, billion is missing. And the president said, where did you get this information? Now, these are things that we ourselves are told. We need to behave with some modicum of responsibility, Caution, yeah. particularly our leaders who go out there and run down this country. Because whatever you say to an American diplomat, be understand that it's reported back at home. Even and when you're having a beer. Yes, yeah. I, I was, yes. pardon me, just let me to say this. I think it was last year, I was in a conference in the United States. And I was listening to some guys on John Hopkins telling the American audience that how the election will lead to civil war in Nigeria. And the fact that the Nigerian army has no capacity to, find two, to fight two wars. And, I, and he kept talking <laughs> about the Niger Delta militants and what they are hearing and the rest of mm -hmm. them. I think I've said this so many times. And I said to him, Peter, where are you getting this info? What are you hearing? At the end of the day, the bloke said he's from uh, social media. Social media. <laughs> and I said, and you are now using it as an academician yes. to, to tell the world that the they, sh they should prepare for, for civil war in Nigeria. For civil war in Nigeria. <laughs> now, these are the people who advise the State uh, Department. Mm -hmm. they, call, they send a message to the ambassador to mm -hmm. take these issues to the Nigerian authorities. And the Nigerian authorities naturally will find this very irritating. Or when the ambassadors begin to go all over the country. Yes. We had, not too long ago, the ambassador here was doing the same thing all over during the country. The, during the campaign. Uh, yes, uh, you know, uh, making statements. Is, is, uh, is it acceptable? The, 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 no, it is not. not. It's not. It's not. And then during the, uh, is, um, I think, Ambassador Sandra's. Mm. Yes. Was also doing the same thing, going over this country, running down people. And look, because of Sandra, the president, uh, uh, Yaradua, came close to canceling Hillary Clinton's visit to this country. So these are some of the irritations That's that we find that when they go out of diplomatic behavior, it becomes irritating to but your host country. how can our officials call them to order? We, look, I mean, for the, for the ambassador that was going all over, look, over, we all over do, the country, we we, a lot of people expected that the foreign we affairs do, minister would call him in. We do try some. to call the ambassadors to order. But you know, I do not blame the ambassadors. I blame the Nigerians. We should take the responsibility. Mm. You know, because we are the ones who go to them. We are the ones who open Invite up the whole place. And, uh, you know, and then they say these things at public function. Nobody, instead we clap. Nobody takes them on. Uh, first of all, uh, first, uh, first of uh, foremost, yes, let me say something. Uh, okay. You know, the ambassadors actually, before they leave Abuja to any of the states, should, should normally get clearance from the foreign ministry. But you see, you can find you find a, a state governor inviting an ambassador to a function or to a state with that clearance from the foreign ministry, and it's absolutely wrong. Is it only ambassador? You Even know, a second secretary, second secretary. chancellor. I tell you something. One day, I walked into um, I walked into the villa, and I met a third secretary having breakfast with President Obasanjo. A third secretary. A third secretary, who would not even see my director, or to talk about I'm sick. And he said to me, uh, the president said to me, Minister, sit down. And I said, no, sir. He said, sit down. I said, no, sir. And when the guy left, and I, said, I said, Mr. President, I said, you having breakfast with the third secretary for, with that clearance uh, from the foreign ministry? I know what he told me. I know what the president told me. <laughs> but it's wrong. Absolutely wrong. Well, all right. Let's, yeah. let's, let's take a look at the issue of you know, our oil um, and uh, it's one area, of course, that um, President Buhari has shown some interest um, as soon as he resumed office. We've had, America and Nigeria has had very good trade you know, relations in the past. They used to buy a lot of Nigerian oil, mm -hmm. but that has declined uh, seriously. Mm -hmm. um, well, if, if you want to call it a coincidence, after the 2010 contracts with the Chinese, 
who are supposed to build three refineries, one in Lagos, Kirby and Bielsa. You know, so uh, somehow they, they, they're turning down buying Nigerian oil. And of course, that has affected uh, our income. Um, now, this uh, turnaround of our entire uh, you know, oil industry uh, most likely will be on the table again for discussions. Um, how would we be thinking about getting America to buy Nigerian oil again? First of all, listen, you know that today America is one of the, uh, if not the highest um, uh, mm -hmm. oil producing country in the world. You know, I have always said, personal, my own personal opinion in the past, total dependence you know, on oil in this country is not good for Nigeria. Total dependence on oil in this country is not good for us. It has made us lazy. It has increased corruption. It has made Nigeria to become a, a you know, from an uh, agro, you know, producing country to an oil producing country. And I said to President Passenger one day, I said, why don't we just shut down the oil for some time? <laughs> because that is where the problem is. Well, people will go hungry. They will go hungry, but, <laughs> but you see, no, they you, won't. you will not go hungry. <laughs> My son keep telling me, he said, look, daddy, so when he said there's no food, he said, look, when you get to the kitchen, you can always eat something. Uh, when you're hungry, you walk out, you get up there and get some and get going. Yeah. Getting Ameri America to buy oil is not the problem. It's first of all, there must be self-economic discipline back home. Look at what is happening today. You cannot walk into the petrol station in Nigeria and buy fuel, not even Abuja. Oil subsidy, nobody knows the truth about the oil subsidy. There's been an um, uh, investigation in the National Assembly. A lot of uh, committees set up to probe into, look into it. No, up to today we haven't gotten any, any report from any of the, of the inquiry set up. Um, the oil subsidy, Buhari said, one said to them, he said, what is it about this subsidy? Can somebody tell us what this subsidy is all about? So you are saying that, that they shouldn't waste their time no, 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 talking no. about but the No, 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 no. We shouldn't even waste our time. We must get back home and get our house in order. But, but we, we must, as a country, defend. I, I mean, I'm asking you, uh, opening up our oil industry to other, other countries. Absolutely. We must do that. But first of all, sometimes we must sit back, you know, shut that door, sit back, look at, to ourselves and say, where did we go wrong? But the case is, it looks like you want to win on this. <laughs> <laughs> be, be, bear in mind that there are two problems here. One, the decline in oil price is a yes. major. It's global. It's yeah. global. It's a major issue affecting us. Uh, in direct response to your question, no, I don't think that we should bother ourselves about uh, getting America to buy oil because for right now they are not going to do that. They're already exporting oil, they have a lot of reserves, and they are taking oil from, the, the little they are buying, they are taking from countries closer where the cost is, is lower. Is so at the end of the of day, and then there's shale oil as well. You know, at the end of the day, it's a question of, look, what we need to do is not to bother ourselves about whether people are buying our oil or not. The little we are selling today, if we can use it and reinvest in productive sector, look, for years, even when I was in school in the university, I've been hearing this word diversification of the Nigerian economy. <laughs> it has not occurred. <laughs> Maybe this is an opportunity for us. Look, when you look at the situation in the states of this country, you know, and I blame you, I have consistently <laughs> blamed the media. But it's true. <laughs> for someone, true. look, let me give you a typical no. example of what the media does. Every year, you award a governor, best governor in this, best governor in education, best governor in that, best governor. So when you aggregate it, something must be happening there in this country. But the same media turn around and write an editorial on how this country is not growing. So on what basis were you awarding the award? They are awards. Award. Most times it's not the media actually. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Because the <laughs> most of the government depend on, on uh, the federal location. Uh, yeah. Virtually yes. What is no. their IGR? <laughs> Take a look at the Have last they diversified in their various states? <laughs> Take a look at the last governors and find out what percentage of job was created in any state. I think on that big <laughs> question, we have to draw the cutting on this segment of our conversation, <laughs> gentlemen. Uh, Your Excellencies, we are very, very glad you had time to come and uh, you were able to share yes. you know, the wealth of your experience. The first uh, <laughs>
<laughs> Excellency, thank, thank you for coming. You I hope, I hope you'll be here from time, time to time. Well, if you invite <laughs> me, I'll be glad to come. So we'll go home we with, with this with palm wine or what? <laughs> coffee. A co the, coffee. The, the choice is yours, Your Excellency. Thank, thank you so very much for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And when we return, we look at the future of the Super Eagles on the. But I was just wondering, but are you related to the no, former? In a, in <laughs> because it's Kenshi Kenshi. No, I, I told him that. Uh, <laughs> I was just saying, had I, had I known, I would have stayed to, you know, to <laughs> challenge him <laughs> on what they are doing. <laughs> 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 He's not from Delta. Uh, uh, no, I think he's from Benway. <laughs> he's, he's from Benway. He's from Benway, <laughs> <laughs> he said, yes. Thank All you right. very much. Thank, Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, Nigeria's biggest late night show. I think the government is doing its, its best. Buhari himself is an issue. Just it's as the Buhari, <laughs> just as the Buhari organization has made good luck, Jonathan, an issue. We have laws, we have institutions set up to fight corruption. Advocacy for the chief of health is born out of what they symbolize. The average Nigerian wants to know what do you have for him? Can I tell you which one was the most impressed by why? What happened? I think he came on a journey. And he discovered that uh, we are still transferring from him. A banking license was cancelled in one day, and a life license was cancelled in one day. When I was in charge, it became worse. Uh, at some times, to even find food to give to the children was hell. Don't tell us we want a, a, a nation that will be good. You're watching your Sunday show, the O and M Sunday show, um, of course, with Obiora and Mamode. Yeah. And um, time to talk sports, another big issue. Uh, I mean, and that's another big issue outside, uh, on the Dasuki, outside the president's uh, visit. Yes. I think the most important other issue in the country today is the new coach, the Super Eagles. Yes, and, and we have a um, longtime coordinator of the national teams, uh, Emmanuel Atta, joining us. You're welcome. Yeah, thank well, you. Well, Iman, <laughs> well, the Super Eagles uh, Guru. Colors. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, uh, Iman, tell us, um, a new coach for Nigeria. Um, is it good or bad? Well, either way, there's nothing me and you can do. The NFF in its wisdom has uh, parted way with uh, Stephen Keshi. And I've appointed a uh, Sunday Olise. And uh, as Nigerians. Was it the timing right? Uh, well, if, if the NFL, in its wisdom, uh, decided to bring Olise in, they must have their own reason. But if we are honest we are with ourselves and we are close observers of what has been happening between Keshi and the Federation, we should all have known that it was just going to be a matter of time before he was asked to go. They just okay. waited mm -hmm. for the right time to ask him to go. They've been in contact with Lisa for some time. Oh, okay. And okay. all we can oh. pray is for Lisa to succeed. Okay, so. Ima, you've, you know, we, we can safely call you a veteran of the Super Eagles or the national teams. You've seen it all. What would you say is the problem? You know, we are changing coaches. Uh, we talk about funding. You talk about corruption. You talk about favoritism. What actually has been the clog mm. in the wheel of progress in our national teams? Yeah, it's a big based big, on your experience. Yeah, it's a big big problem. Uh, I've been with the Super Eagles for eight years, and within that eight years, I've worked with six different national coaches: wow. Betty Vox, Amadi Shaibu, Ugwabo, Siasia, Lagabag, and then uh, of recent Keshi. And like Riley said, what is the problem? At times the problem with the foreign coaches, let me start with the foreign coaches. It's usually with the administration, the structure on ground. Most of these uh, foreign coaches, when they come, the way they operate in Europe is not the way they see uh, in Nigeria. Usually got to do with the administration. 
as a major problem. The administration, where you, know, you don't have the facilities, where you don't uh, pay uh, then on time, where maybe the players are not being uh, well kitted, all this uh, cause a lot of uh, uh, frustration. In the case of Betty Vox, after the match in Ghana, during the Nations Cup uh, 2008, they abandoned the team in, uh, in, uh, in Accra. In fact, middle after the game, he flew out that night. Amadi Shaibu, I still keep asking, what did he do wrong in 2010, before 2010? Qualified us for the World Cup, won third place in the Nations Cup. Of course, he met his contract. Yet he was not allowed to go to the World Cup because we wanted a foreign coach. Few week, few months to, to the World Cup, he now brought uh, Lager back, and you expect him to perform magic. The man collected his money and left. I remember Lagba told me that he was going, even though those that employed him, Patrick Kj and Co, wanted him to stay. But Lagba said, "Emmanuel, your country's problem, Emmanuel. <laughs> you are fighting. I like the president, Sani Lulu." But they said they, they removed him, Emmanuel. So I cannot stay and go in. And he left. And he left. Gavon came, had a short stint. Then you now employ Siasia. Football, you cannot win it all the time. You cannot. If you really play football, you know there are ups and downs. Employ Siasia has been doing well. Unfortunately, we couldn't go for the Nations Cup in 2012. We had a draw here. And Siasa was already building a very good team for the country, attacking team. You now ask him to go. To go. Then Lord Keshi. Keshi. I remember when Keshi got this employment, I made a statement in the Daily Trust. So it was a full page, an interview. We analyzed all the coaches, the Super Eagles. I said, if Keshi doesn't succeed in Nigeria, no other coach will succeed. And when he came, yeah, he's in Nigeria, he has captain this country, so he knows the in and out, was able to overcome so many obstacles. But then, in fairness to the then board led by Aminu Megiri, they really gave him everything, cooperated with him, yeah. worked with him. And he delivered. I yeah, think. and he delivered. I think one man that this country needs to apologize to, or there are two men, this country needs to apologize to. Sorry, I'm deviating a little. No problem. That's uh, Sunny Lulu. Yes. The former NFL, former NFL chairman. chairman yeah. who, did, who did a lot for this country, but was unjustly being accused. So the case is still in court. I won't dwell into that. Then I mean, Wegeri came and almost won almost every trophy. The minister, with due respect to him, Danagogo Jack, just came and never studied the water and had his own agenda. Okay. And then so made, sure the, and, and made not even kicked him out, disgraced and arrested him for what? And that is okay. the problem we are facing. That, you know, when you talk, yeah. it, still, it still links with Everything the problem. Everything still, still on the administration, still so links. There, there's some kind the of energy. mafia yeah, that going, is running going, Nigerian going football. So there's no way. Ima, but, but in this confusion, yeah. now that we have Odise, in a very few sentences, what should we do to make the best of this opportunity? Yeah, now that we have uh, Odise, as far as I'm concerned, people are saying he doesn't have experience in coaching. Okay, that's not the issue. Odise has seen it all. He has good assistants. I know of Saris Yusuf, very experienced coach. Alayago, very experienced coach. I don't know much about the Belgians. But then, Holy said to succeed, there are three basic things. One, the present board must give him all the necessary cooperation. They have promised and, to do and, that. And they have promised to do that. Yeah. And if it's good enough, they have paid him upfront for three months. Two, the facilities. I must tell you, we don't have training facilities for the national team, in, in fact, all the national teams in this country. The movable goalpost, we don't have. We have the pitches. Well, he says saying he needed a good pitch to train. But I think we have to advise him that this is Africa. Oh, yeah. We should manage what we have. We should <laughs> manage what we have. Yes. And thirdly, and thirdly. to play in some terrible pitches. Some 
In fact, Chad, the old Paragon peach, is, is, at, uh, is 10 times better than the peach, the eagles we play with in Chad. Then uh, that's about facilities we put on ground for him. Thirdly, yes. the players. I have worked with all these players, right from the under 17 players up to the senior team senior players. Yes. They have very funny sets of people. What they did to all the coaches, mainly they, you come as a new coach. Yeah, they will give you 100% cooperation. They will play their life in their first two matches. But the moment you lower your guard, you are finished. So for you say to succeed with the players, first thing, he must call them for a meeting, lay his cards on the table. This is the way I want to operate. This is what and what I want. You guys, you've had my table yours. Then you come to a middle way. So that if you they say, must be on the same page. Yeah, if you say no visitor, now no visitor. If you say this is time for training, we, we all agree. It's not when I'm operating uh, in a different way. Yeah, I'm operating a different way. Different. So it's mm -hmm. a lot of work, but <laughs> may God help you. May God, may God help, help us. us. That may does God help us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what a wonderful uh, way to end the program today. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, I think we are going to do a program on uh, on, 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 the, on football, yes, on football. Nigerian national team. So and you'll be one of the key yes, resource we'll, people we'll be looking we'll out for. We'll have to bring you back on that special <laughs> program. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so thank much. You, thank That's you. Uh, your first time on the show, <laughs> so you will get to go home with uh, a mug. This, this is beautiful. Yes, uh, yeah, so for sure that you were a guest on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank we know you so have so many pleasure. trophies, but please yeah. find yeah, yeah, a very special place for this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And um, that's how we are ending the show for today. Don't forget that you can watch this show and all our other shows yeah. if you go to hblnews.com or you download our application. HBL News. I am Obiora Ilo from Abuja, Nigeria. Let's do it again on Tuesday. Yes. yes. And that will be at 11 p.m. My name is Mamude Akuka. Thank you all so much for watching and bye for now.